how's it going? How's it? I've been, uh, I guess, getting the Russian, Russian game back on track is the big, uh, what does the coach call it? Uh, easy narrative. Yeah. Surface. Surface, yeah. There you go. I, look, at the end of the day, like I've told you guys before, it's, it's our job to go out there and score points. Um, unfortunately, uh, last week we had our opportunities in the red area. Uh, and when you come away the way that we did, um, you don't get the result that you want. And so obviously each week, regardless of what happened the previous week, uh, you want to go out and you want to execute at a high level and you want to score points. Um, regardless if you had a great game the week before uh, and scored a lot of points or you didn't. Um, so going in, the focus has been on attention to our details and the fundamentals and making sure that we're on top of it and when execution uh, needs to be at a high level, specifically in those situational football areas, uh, making sure that we stay on top of it. And the same thing goes for the coaches, you know, making sure that we're uh, putting our players in the best position um, in terms of design and, and things of that nature. So we're always evaluating uh, not just the players but ourselves and, and move forward each week and, again, try to find a way uh, against a good team uh, to score uh, good defense, to score points. I know you kids, was that a matchup deal? I mean, were they, was that a... No, I think it came down to the fact that, you know, again, give them credit. Okay. Uh, they did take some things away, obviously. They're, that's a good football team uh, last week, San Francisco. Uh, we also had our opportunities. Um, and we just, you know, we were a, a, a tick off here or there for making the play. And again, you know, you score touchdowns down there. Um, the outcome, the outlook, uh, things feel different as the game progresses. And uh, again, it's our objective each week to make sure that uh, we get we get points down there. Mm -hmm. And what, what you know, just generally, um, kind of big picture, what what has it been like to work with a veteran like Matt? Uh, of, you know, fourteen games, uh, sure, off season, so forth. Guy that uh, you know, you know. Yeah, he's been awesome. I mean, I think I've said that from day one. I think what the you you always. Uh, when you're on different teams and you're coaching that position, you obviously study guys throughout the league. Um, and Matt has been one just because of the similar offenses that Matt had run that we at that time were running in different places that we're at. Um, I would use Matt in the cutups. I would show his footwork. I would show his eyes. I would show his ball handling. Um, to be able now to work with him uh, and to see how much pride he takes in every detail um, that goes into just preparing himself for practice, let alone a game. Uh, you have a much appreciation for someone like that from afar, but when you get a chance to actually uh, sit there and watch him and observe and coach him, um, he's everything as, as, uh, as you can imagine in terms of the professional. He goes about it the right way. He never cheats the game. What I mean by that is if it's a practice rep, if it's a game rep, he has given you everything he's got in every play. And if that's carrying out a fake, um, that's getting in the right check, whatever it is, mentally or physically, uh, he never cheats a snap. And that's probably the biggest compliment um, that I could give anyone, uh, let alone, obviously, a quarterback of Matt Stature. We were talking to Arthur yesterday, and he made the comment that he kind of thinks that Kyle is just scratching the surface of the player that he can be. And um, Do you feel the same, and kind of what's the evidence of that? Maybe something that we don't even see. Sure, I think, you know, Obviously, it's, I go back to this, right? You, you come out and you just left college and all of a sudden you sign with an agent and then you go work out and you're going through the draft process. Most years you have a combine, you have workouts, you have a pro day, you get drafted, all those months and then all of a sudden you go to a new city. And so having to deal with all that as a rookie, it's a lot, especially when you're 20 at the time we drafted Kyle. And then now you go into an NFL. OTAs, training camps, which he's never gone through, right? So every day, right, is a new experience. So what you hope is for all second-year players, specifically ones that are as young as some of the ones that we have, that in the second year, they now know what an off-season, okay, I don't have to, these obligations of getting ready for a draft or doing these workouts. Like now, right, I've got my schedule. I know when I have to be in the building again. I know what my OTA schedule can look like. I know what training camps can look like. So I think it's just a the ability to come back with an understanding of what's next. When you're going through it the first time, I mean, head on a swivel, right? So the reality is you hope that part of the process, as I look at Kyle, right, that part is settled because he'll now know as he's going through his second year what to expect, understanding the season's a long season, how to take care of your body, um, understanding that 
what training camp is now, what we're asking for you to do. And so when you put all that together, and then now you go ahead and say he's a year older, a year stronger, a year wiser, from a physical and mental standpoint of the game, I think now all of a sudden you can see some things uh, maybe happen faster or easier, or hey, I've got experience. I know when I did that last time, last year, this is what happened to me. I'm not going to do that this year. And so he'll have a whole season to go back and watch the film and study himself and how he improved and what he needs to improve on um, and things that he's done well and continue to do well. So to me, that's where you see typically, I was told this a long time ago when I was a player, most jumps for NFL players happen from year one to year two. For a quarterback, some are different from year two to year three. So the reality is you got a lot of things off the field that potentially could be different and settled and different mindset. And then obviously on the field, you got a whole year of cut-ups to watch yourself. So I think from a long way to answer your question, I just think there's a lot of things that now he can anticipate, which before he just going in for the first time, you just don't know. All right, and, and I think kind of going off of that, you know, I'm, there's always that expectation for the number four overall draft pick that's put on a guy whether you want it or not. And, and I, Arthur was saying, you know, a lot of guys can't handle that, but Kyle can. How, how do you see him kind of handling that within himself? Yeah, I guess the best way I can explain it for obviously being in the building with him all the time is Kyle is more than likely the same person every day. So you get a consistency there. And you appreciate people who are consistent. Uh, it doesn't mean you're not having a bad day once in a while or having like a really good day and there's some in between. The reality is like when you see Kyle, you know what to expect in the building. Uh, you know how he's going to be in a meeting. He'll be attentive. You ask him questions. And then when he's out in the field, you're now understanding how he's going about a practice. So to me, the consistency level um, – is important as a rookie just because you're getting pulled in a lot of different directions, um, especially when you're as high as pick as that. Um, but I would say anybody in the NFL, once you get here, the reality is, yeah, no doubt, people want to know how you got there. But then after that, they want to see if you can produce, right? So I think there's a story that's written about when you get here, but the reality is most people only care about once you get here, what do you do with it? And I think Kyle is just going about putting his head down trying to be fundamentally sound, do what the coaches ask, and make the plays that are given. And he'll can obviously continue to trend that way. Can you take him or any of the young guys on with a checklist, so whenever the season ends, an off-season checklist to say this, if the, you might want to look at these things, or do you sure. just say we'll see you when you get back? Yeah, no, I mean, obviously, we have to go through it first as coaches. So we typically do uh, no different, because right when the season ends, right, you obviously have, um, there's an evaluation process of your own roster. There's obviously an evaluation process of the free agents that are coming out that are not on your team, and then obviously you're into the college draft. So it's a true evaluation period. You evaluate not just the players, but your scheme and your design and everything else that goes in it. Then you obviously you're watching each player. Uh, the guys that you know are under contract that will be back, you, there's definitely a report that you'll, you'll talk about and you'll share with that player the good, uh, the things that he can improve on. And when, obviously when they're back in the building, you share it with them. And it gives them a chance to work on some of those things and you build tapes for them and you help them with their craft. At the end of the day, I think most players would tell you, regardless of the background of the coach, if, if he thinks that person can help him or, that, or he or she can help him as a coach, it doesn't matter. So I think that's what we're trying to provide is the ability to help that player when they come back in the building. Well, we're almost a full season into using Cordero as a Swiss Army knife with a little bit of perspective now. What's impressed you most about how he's made this transition? Usually that's a Rothstein question. I know. And we're, we're, we're now here, so good. <laughs> I love it. We brought in another guy for the CP question. No, it's, again. <laughs> it's that area. That's that area. I love it. No, I thought it was planned. Nice job, D. D led planned that right there. Um, look, uh, the, the one thing I have said about C, um, is that he's a, he's a football player first. So when you're a football player first, what I mean is you're not really defined by necessarily a position. You've got a feel. And when he's out there with the things that we ask him to do, uh, you know, what I think is, is pretty interesting is you got a guy who's now committed 100% to being in the running back room. But then all of a sudden, right, he might be put out in the formation and he has to rely back on his experience as a wide receiver, uh, which he was drafted in this league to play. And what you admire about him, what I appreciate about him, um, is his willingness, his want, and how he plays the game. So you turn the film on, or you're in the stands, or you're watching from the sideline, um, and you see a guy who goes out, and he's giving you 
every time he's got a chance, he's going to give you everything he's got. And again, I've, I've known him for a long time. I appreciate the person. Um, and I think his teammates appreciate the same thing that I think the coach has always seen his value and how the guy interacts, how he is as a teammate. Um, and again, I'm, I'm glad that he's having the production and when he's got an opportunity, um, he's just a guy that I, through the years, not just myself, but other guys have always seen as a potential, man, this is a difference maker. Um, and at times this year, he's obviously have been for us. Given the, uh, the, the way the college game is changing, do you expect to see more positional players like him? Yeah, I mean, I think what's unique about some of these guys who can flex is there's a mental part that I think you have to be able to handle. It's one thing to see it on a piece of paper and say, yeah, I can do it. The reality is the game happens fast. So if you're all of a sudden put in a position that you don't have a ton of experience in, I just think that takes a, a very certain type of person that can handle that. Um, didn't grow up playing it, so there's not a lot of equity built into how you play the position. I think at the end of the day, it, what you see is you're looking for certain traits, right? You're looking for a guy who can be dynamic with the ball in his hands, but he can be physical. He can be a difference maker. He makes defenses change how they play. There's a lot of great college players that come in the NFL. Um, the reality is when they finally get into a position to be that, most guys can't handle doing more than one thing. And I think as CP has gotten older, I think he's gotten the appreciation, the experience, and the understanding of how to do that. I just think it's a tough task to bring in somebody, especially right from college, to be able to do that. Maybe you can groom someone and help someone that way. It's just, it'll be interesting how the league moves forward with it, for sure. Maybe I'm making this up, but no. it's, <laughs> it's possible. I'm going to run it by you. It seems that he, more than anybody I can remember, is down by forward progress and doesn't actually get tackled a ton. He doesn't get tackled to the ground more than most guys I've seen. Am I making that up, or is there a reason for that? Is that balance? Is that yeah. because he runs up right? Is that? Yeah, I don't. I haven't looked or thought of it that way. Okay. Um, what I see is he's 230 pounds, regard, maybe 235 if he ate the night before. Some, <laughs> some of the things that he goes. But the reality is, physical player, right? So, once contact's made, here's the one thing I do know. Um, you. Guys who typically, when they meet CP in the hole or wherever, like, it's going to be a collision. And CP doesn't shy away from contact. Um, and that's what goes back to the fact of just being a football player. Um, he knows how to play, but the reality is he's not uh, – he tries to play the right way. Going back to the short order situation that, that Eli was asking about, I mean, I know that's obviously not what y'all want. And, and the, when you look at the numbers, I think it was like one for seven with like a yard to go this past week and um, what do you kind of just say to this unit when you're in those situations where the margin of error is so small to kind of just get the job done in those situations? Yeah, I, I will go back and you guys will remember 2021 as me saying the same thing about fundamentals. Like I, I just execution obviously is important. You practice the looks that you get and sometimes defenses prepare a different look than maybe you haven't seen on film and then you use your rules as a player to adjust to whatever you just saw. But it, it will always come down, regardless of position, at all 11, is it starts with your stance from the time you were whatever age you started playing football to how you take your first step to where your eyes go. And that's just the pure fundamentals of it all. So the reality is, regardless if it's third and one, second and one, first and one, um, regardless of that situation or just the entirety of the game, the, the team that plays with good fundamentals is disciplined, detailed. I'm not saying the ball doesn't bounce a different way sometimes, but the reality is you're more successful than you're not. When you get out of your fundamentals where your eyes are in the wrong spot or you don't take a great first step, more than likely there's going to be inconsistency. And so that's what we continue to strive for, regardless of the situation, is the consistency of the fundamentals of not just the body but the eyes and knowing what you need to do and applying your rules. So moving forward, that's that's been our – what we've been telling guys, and it'll continue to be what we tell guys. Anything else?